tonight I would like to start with an aria from the opera Don Carlo, Canzone de Bello. Um, the, I should say a lot of the arias that I will be singing tonight are sung by the bad girls of opera. Not all of them are bad, but this one is, is particularly bad. She's a very naughty girl. Uh, this aria, the Canzone del Bello, is the Princess Eboli entertaining her ladies-in-waiting. Um, and it's about a young girl in the garden of Mohammed, and um, she's, you know, she has a veil on, and, and Mohammed doesn't know who she is, and that's fine with her. And the opera is important insofar as it was uh, written about uh, the Spanish Inquisition. And uh, the Princess Eboli uh, is having an affair with the king, King Philip II of Spain. And she's also having an affair with his son, Don Carlos. And Don Carlos, the tenor, is having an affair with Princess Eboli and with his stepmother. So who says that opera is born? It's a lot of fun. Canzone de Vello. Thank you. 
Uh, this next aria is from the opera Adriana Le Couvre, and it's based on a true story. Uh, the singer that, uh, yeah, that I am portraying is the Princess of Bouillon, who again is in love with the tenor, who is having an affair with the soprano, who is married. Same old, same old. It's usually a love triangle of some sort. Uh, this aria actually is, uh, doesn't really have anything really to do with the drama of the opera. It's just a very gorgeous aria. And uh, the Princess Bouillon is waiting for Maurizio, the tenor, to come to her. And she's just kind of reveling in the fact that she's in love with him. And she's hoping that he is in love with her. The aria of Vagabonda.
Uh, this next aria is from the opera Manon Lescaut by Puccini. It is, the name of it is In, in Quelle Trine Morbide. Um, it, this aria is sung at the beginning of the second act of the opera. And Manon Lescaut is a young woman, again, kind of naughty, and her parents are thinking about sending her to a convent. Well, on, something happens on the way to the convent. She doesn't get there. Um, she meets a young man. His name is Degrieux, who is a young, dashing student, yet poor. And then she meets an older gentleman, uh, very rich. Well, guess which one she chooses. Well, anyway, in the second act, she's sort of lamenting the fact that she chose the older man because now she misses Degrieux. But you know, if it were the other way around, she would be missing the money. So it kind of can't make her happy. In quelle trine morbide. <laughs> Aria um, is from the opera Gianni Schicchi. It's O mio babino caro. It is something probably that you have heard in the past. Um, now, this character is not naughty. Her name is Lauretta, and she is engaged to Renuzio. And they are planning their wedding. And in the meantime, his grandfather dies. And so when they find out what he's left, there's a will, of course, and when they, the family members find out that he has left all of the money to the church, the family comes up with a plan. The notary has to come and get the last will and testament from the quote-unquote dying gentleman. Well, he's already dead. So they try to um, get Johnny Skeeky to pretend as if he's the, the deceased and to tell the notary, well, I want this, and I want that, and I want the other. And so in this aria, uh, Loretta is asking her father, please, 
to do this for their family so that she and Renuzio can get married. And it's, you know, it's kind of dramatic. She's being very dramatic. She says, if you don't, I will kill myself. But of course she doesn't, and it has a happy ending. O mio babino caro. Well, this next, shall we say, character in opera really needs no introduction. She is the quintessential bad girl. Um, and this is an aria that you've all heard hundreds of times. Yeah. 
Now this next aria from Carmen is at the end of the first act and Carmen has been arrested by Don Jose and he's going to take her off to jail for starting a fight in the cigarette factory and she takes one look at this guy and she knows she's not going to jail because she's going to charm her way out of this. And in this aria, she tells him, oh, we're going to have so much fun. We're going to go to Lila's Pastia, and we're just going to dance, and we're going to drink all night. And at the end of it, at the end of the uh, act, the act one, instead of her being tied up, she ties him up, and he gets arrested. So this is the Segudia from Carmen. <laughs> She mon ami Lilas Bastia, j'ai dansé la cigarette et boire du vin sanio. J'irai chez mon ami Lilas Bastia. Oh oui, mais tu sais aussi lui, elle est pisée sans dire, dans ma matinée compagnie, jamais ne rêve mon amour.
Well, this next character in opera is very, very naughty. Her name is Delilah. And, uh, of course, you know the story, Samson and Delilah. She's a Philistine, and uh, she's trying to find uh, the secret of Samson's strength. In this first aria, Amour vient et day, it's kind of her habanera. She is stating the fact that she's powerful. She has power over this man, and he has to succumb to her wishes, her charms, as it were. Amour vient et day.
This next aria is very familiar. It is the Mon Coeur, and it is the aria where she literally is uh, seducing him in order to get the secret to his strength. And when you hear it, you've heard this, I'm sure, many, many times, but when you hear it, you know why he tells her it's irresistible.
premiere of an Alleluia that was written by David Fox. David, are you here? Stand up so people can see you. Wave. So this is a lovely, there's, there's four pieces and I think that you will, you will enjoy them. Oh, <laughs> 